Greetings everyone, it's Jeremy Muddy coming to you again. Today's video is going to be about familiar spirits, shapeshifters, and everything else that connects with it, such as witchcraft and mediums and all those things. But familiar spirits have been used several occasions throughout the Bible. And many times I've skimmed by it and I didn't really realize what they were, didn't understand it. But since I was reading, I felt I was doing something. God opened my eyes a few months ago to actually start studying into this topic. And familiar spirits are satanic agents. They're demonic agents, cohorts of the enemy that acts as investigators. <laughs> what they do, they have assignments and their assignment, just like everyone, every, everybody, everybody in the body of Christ, so it is in the kingdom of darkness. But their assignment specifically is to observe and to learn as much as possible from persons, groups, or an individual. So these things act on a lot of different scales, geographically, culturally, globally, organizationally. And these cohorts, they are very, 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 very slick, cunning, screwed, manipulative. They are, they have the appearance of light. But in actuality, we know that they're dead, dark, bitter, and that they're just being used by the, by their enemy, by their father. Um, but these familiar spirits, um, one in particular, one passage that I want to touch on is in First Samuel chapter twenty eight, when uh, the prophet Samuel died and Saul was you know, going through his dismal stage and he was going through that phase in which he was getting real desperate. Um, after Samuel died, he told, he cut off all the necromancies and he cut off all the mediums and all those things uh, throughout the land. But yet, he sent his servant to inquire of a woman that had a familiar spirit. And the servant came back and told him that there's a woman with a familiar spirit, a witch, at Endor. And uh, there you can go to commune with the spirit. Basically, Saul tried prophets, he tried orms, he tried everything. No one was giving him dreams, prophetic words, he wasn't hearing from God. And so he decided to turn to the opposition. And even though he already knew, he already knew um, that he wasn't supposed to consult with these mediums, he still was in such a, a desperate stage that he just did it anyway. So when he approached this woman, he left at night. He approached this woman at night with two other men. And when he approached her, uh, he inquired from her. She told him, no, I can't do it because Saul has you know put these certain restrictions and if you know i do it and he finds out i'm gonna be killed saul so being masqueraded uh so i'll be masked in clothing and hiding his hiding his image told her no he, he won't do that and basically he made a vow or promise using the lord uh, at that time as we a lot of us already know his anointing was already snatched from him, so that's why he was real desperate too. His anointing was snatched from him, but yet he was making these, you know, promises and these things to this woman, this witch. First off, um, can't be saved or protected from you, but needs to turn from her ways. Um, she followed through and agreed with his request. So she summoned Samuel. And as she summoned Samuel, she got scared, frightened, and she shrieked. And Saul asked her, what, what's the issue? What, what's wrong? She said, I saw a God 
coming from the underworld, coming from beneath the earth. And Saul asked her, how did he look? He was an old man, you know, gray hair or whatever. And he was covered with a mantle or a cloth or clothing. He was covered. And he was like, oh. So Saul initially figured, yeah, that is Samuel. That is Samuel. So when Prophet Samuel arrived, he basically had the same disposition as the Samuel that was living that. Well, let me tell you, go back, it connects. They study you so much, they mean in familiar spirits, that they know your personality, they know your weaknesses, your strengths, they know what arouses you, they know your pet peeves, they know when you fell the last time, how you fell, they know how you speak, they know how you, how you correspond with people, they know all these things. So. The familiar spirit that was on this witch at Endor communicated with a familiar spirit of Prophet Samuel, and therefore they had this connection going. So there was a networking, if you would, if you would, in the spirit. So there was transferring information to one another. There was sending emails to one another, and he talked to him and he told. Um, he told us all the truth, basically, and basically, I know, using my exegetical supposition, it was of it was done in a way to destroy him. It was like a fatal blow. It was to destroy him. Like it's over. God snatched the kingdom from your hands, and He's giving it to someone else. You have no hope. It's over for you. You're done. Finito. Just die. Yeah, fall on the ground, die, weep, don't cry, just die. And that's what the enemy does us. He comes, he comes and he exaggerates uh, on the things of God. He knows scripture so well, he knows what's going on so well because according to the word of God, he is uh, very intellectual. He's intelligent, he's shrewd, he's wise, he's sage. That's his being. We have to expect that. He is considered to be the prince of the power of the air. He is what he is. He was an archangel and he feels like he could control this world system and control the earth. Just like how God is king of the heavenlies and he is over the earth realm. The enemy, since he's here, he's trying to control, he's strategize, and he's a great tactician. That's who he is. So, what he's doing, he's using all his cohorts to do what they have to do so that his mission of stealing, killing, and destroying could be fulfilled. So, right then and there, familiar spirits was, was, was mentioned. Um, furthermore, if you read in the book of Leviticus, Leviticus 19.31, God warns us to not seek mediums or wizards. For in seeking them, you could become, you will become unclean. For I, the Lord, say so, basically. I'm the Lord your God. Don't seek them. It'll, it'll make you unclean. Approximately 10 verses from there, which will be around Leviticus 26. God once again tells us, gives us the consequences of seeking these things. You know, it's a little bit more stern and judgmental. He said, do not turn to mediums. Do not seek them, the mediums or wizards. Do not whore after them, for I, the Lord, will turn my face from you. I will cut you from among your people. Hallelujah. Therefore, consecrate yourself. Be holy, for I, the Lord, am holy. He went on to say, yeah, follow my statues, trust in my command, follow my statues. You know, I am your Lord, your God. I Follow it. I am he who sanctifies you. And right then and there, and I'm going to rewind. I'm going to go back. I'm going to go back. Prophet Samuel. The familiar spirit that was acting as Prophet Samuel. Let me go back right there and give you some more information. The Word of God dictates and it tells us, Hallelujah. If you, if you read, 
If you read Ecclesiastes 9 and 5, it tells you, For the living know that they will die, but the dead doesn't have any memory. Their memory is gone, everything is gone. The level of the, the love, their hate has vanished, has perished. For they will not take any part under the sun. It's over with, it's finito. You read in First Thessalonians 4, 16, 17, it talks about, you know, the dead in Christ rising. And when Jesus comes, that's when they'll rise and all those things, you can read it. Um, and then there is, in the book of Revelation, chapter 14, verse six, uh, chapter 16, verse 14, it talks about the spirits, these demons, these spirits will be able to perform these signs and wonders. And you have to tie that in because a lot of us, we get caught up in seeing these signs and wonders. But the Word of God tells us that the enemy, he's going to have his time of reign. The enemy, he can do trickery. He can do, perform all type of things. There's many people, if you read uh, in the Gospels, many people, they're going to be shocked because, I mean, have I not prophesied in your name? Have I not cast out devils in your name? Have I not done this? You could be outside the will of God and because of your giftings and because of who God is, uh, because he's going to use you to profit the kingdom of God. A lot of things are going to be done. He's going to use you to do. You're going to prophesy. You're going to do all of this. But it's for the people, it's for the kingdom. There's a lot of these demonic entities that could perform these things if you connect all of that. That's going to be, there's a lot of demons, hallelujah, false apostles, false prophets, false, uh, false um, teachers, false Christ that's going to come if you read Matthew 24, 24. And they're going to show signs and wonders. They're going to go do all type of things. And they're going to seduce people. Even possibly, if possible, even the elect, even the chosen, they're going to be turned away. Because many of these false prophets, apostles, and false Christs will arise. And, and they're going to do these things that people are going to just be struck and They're going to be captivated by. And they're going to be drawn into. And God wants us to get that eye of discernment. He wants us to have that spirit. Hallelujah, to understand and to test these spirits, to know that there's a lot of familiar spirits, impersonating spirits out there that may have the appearance of righteousness, but they're not righteous. Hallelujah, and that's what familiar spirits do. They download these things into the database and they use it. They use it. Hallelujah, they impersonate you and they use, they use these things to derail and to hinder and to deceive and to lead people into error. And that's what they do. Hallelujah. But to go even further more, I go into it. In the book of Acts chapter 12, if you read, Peter was in prison. He was imprisoned. And he was sleeping between two others. And he was chained. And an angel appeared. And the angel loosed him from the cords of restraint. And the angel led him through the jail. He led him out of the jail, through the gate, and into the pathway. And then he vanished. Peter approached the gateway where uh, many people were praying, the elders, everyone. Uh, he went to the house of Mary. Mary, the mother of Mark, also known as John, went to the house. And Rhoda heard Peter outside the door because Peter was knocking consistently. You read the scriptures, that's what it says. He was knocking. And Rhoda was so overwhelmed with jolly. She was jubilant. She ran back and told everyone, Peter is outside the gate. He's been released from prison paraphrase and they were like nah nah he's not that must have been his angel that must have been his angel that's an angel of Peter oh so we when we read scriptures we have to you know catch that so they were knowledgeable about such things so they knew that there were angels that looked like us and we do know that the enemy tries to reflect the kingdom of heaven so it is in heaven he tries to reflect it and distort it and pervert it so uh the enemy hallelujah just like with tattoos because god tattoos us tattoos us with the holy spirit he marks us as his own 
He is, his word is in our heart. It's binded to our forehead. And the enemy comes about and he distorts that. And he, he puts tattoo in the skin. And he wants barcodes. And he wants markings on the forehead of 666. You know, that's what the enemy does. But that's a different teaching. Um, but that's what he does. So it's just an example. He flips the cross upside down. He calls it his own. He takes the star of David. He does all. He does all type of stuff. Distort all type of things, and that's what he does. So he initially is gonna have some some of his angels that look like us. Yeah, he's gonna have some angels that's gonna appear to be angels of light, and that's gonna look like us, act like us, preach like us, pray like us, walk like us, talk like us feel like they're gonna do all type of things hallelujah but we know what we know is that well you know when there's a genuine thing there's a counterfeit with anything in life there's fake gucci bags there's fake burberry bags there's fake this there's fake that but there's also a real thing hallelujah and jesus you see god has come to give us that level of discernment. He's come to give us that level to know, to let us be aware of the fact that I am genuine. I am the genuine God. I am the real God. According to 1 John 5.20, you see, he's given us this discernment so that we may know what is genuine, what is real. Hallelujah. And that's what they do, familiar spirits. They just come and they shake themselves and they do all type of things. Here come the practical teaching right here too. With the shapeshifters, with somewhat, they all connected to act, you know, the work alongside the familiar spirit. Hallelujah. The shapeshifters are just, you know, something Hollywood came up with, but it's so real. Shapeshifters, you could say familiar spirits are just like shapeshifters. But I'm going to give you some instances, some practical instances God showed me uh, on this week. You have to be careful who you allow into your circle, who you allow into your life. We already know that. You know, we know the scriptures that talks about evil communication and talks about being unequally yoked. And talks about what fellowship light has with darkness. We've heard all these things. This meaning we feel like we know it all, but we don't. I'm going to give you a little bit more instance in which how serious it is for us to understand that these scriptures should come to life in our lives. These scriptures should be, you know, our, our inspiration in our every walk, our every moment, our every thought. And God was telling me this. You have to be careful, um, and this goes for the ladies. You gotta be careful who you allow to wear your clothing, whose clothing you allow you allow yourself to wear, whose shoes, whose hair you plan, all those things. I'm gonna give you an example. The enemy wants to act like God so much that this is what he does. You know that God is a potter. He's molded us. He's shaped us. He's taken us out of the miry clay. And he's working on us. We're a work in progress. He's still working on us. You know, we have to come to the potter's house. And he'll do this great work in our lives. The enemy is acting as such. And what the enemy does, he uses these familiar spirits. He uses different agents and different individuals. Knowingly and unknowingly to do these things. When you have an individual playing in your hair and you're wearing their clothes and they're, they're doing certain stuff and they're putting makeup on you and stuff like that. God showed me this. It was an imagery. He showed me it. It was quick, but it was so powerful. The enemy, what he does, he's using his identification, his fingerprints, and he's embedding it inside or he's embedding it into the clay into your clay so as he's putting on makeup and as he's mentoring you and as he's being your friend and your associate as he's speaking hallelujah he's speaking into your destiny he's and um, he's identifying you as his own he's marking you as his own as he's putting on the makeup 
the fingerprint of his uh, uh, of his unrighteousness, the fingerprint of his jealousy, the fingerprint of his control, because that's what he's doing with a lot of these seducing spirit, controlling you. He's shaping and crafting you, just like what our father does, just so he could call himself your father. Another thing God showed me on February 21st of this year, as I was taking a shower, God was showing me how the things of the past, how it's still the same now. Yes, the enemy reinvents himself. Yes, time has passed. But it's the same trend. It's the same thing. He was showing me how witches and wizards and warlocks and all these things, how they're still using these portions in our lives. And he showed me this uh, by showing me example with perfumes and colognes. Those colognes and those perfumes have been stirred and mixed and they've been conjured up and they've have been they've have been added different things these different aromas have been added to these things and the enemy uses these things these aromas these portions just like he uses Ouija boards and he uses talismans and he uses the lucky charms and he uses all these things these things that a lot of us have been buying from stores we have to be careful about what we buy if you ever notice, I'm talking to the fellas right now. We could be on top of our game. We could be in the will of God. We could just be focused, doing something, working, writing, walking around. And there could be a young lady. There could be a woman just passes. And this woman could be one that is not a 